Right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well and keeping safe out there in the world at this current time. And today I have some information from Game Rant on apparently the top five locations for an Assassin's Creed game that could be either DLC from previous games or a brand new standalone Assassin's Creed game based in that location. And we'll be counting down from five to one in a few moments. Before we get into that, if you have enjoyed what you've heard by the end of the video, don't forget to do what it says at the bottom of the page, and that's leave a like, comment, let me know what you think about the locations and the information and everything else. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, help support the channel. You can follow me on the social media websites listed on the page here also. And with all that out of the way, let's get into today's video. Coming in at number 5, the rule of Alexander the Great. As heir to the Macedonian throne, Alexander was an ambitious man. When he became king, possibly by murdering his own father, he began an aggressive military campaign against his neighbours. He managed to conquer Persia, which had a history of wars with Greece, and even installed himself as Pharaoh of Egypt. Ultimately, however, Alexander was a victim of his own success. He never knew when to stop and always wanted to keep expanding. Eventually his own soldiers started to turn on him. His biggest mistake was failing to provide a succession plan, a choice which led to a power vacuum and the empire's collapse after his sudden death at the age of 32. Alexander was brought up in Assassin's Creed Origins despite it being set 274 years after his death. A major plot point involved uncovering Alexander's tomb where it was implied he had access to at least one Isu artifact. But there could be some interesting potential to a game actually set during his reign. Alexander's warmongering nature would make him a fitting antagonist. Although a full scale open world set across Alexander's empire would be impressive, just one of the many places he conquered could make a good setting. Another option would be to do a game after Alexander's death and the subsequent chaos that came from his failure to name an heir. Without a clear course of action, his empire quickly began turning on itself trying to gain control. The idea of the player being caught in the civil war amidst the decaying ruins of Alexander's empire might also make an interesting story. At number four, we have ancient China. Ancient Chinese history goes back at least as far as 1250 BCE with the Shang dynasty, but it was the rise of Qin Shi Huang and his conquest over warring states that solidified it as a major power. Over time, they would produce significant inventions like paper and the compass. They were even making gunpowder centuries before anyone knew what a gun was. A game set in ancient China would have a spectacular environment to explore and some major landmarks with which to engage in standard Assassin's Creed parkour. The most obvious would have to be getting to climb the famous Great Wall. But climbing over palaces and navigating the iconic terracotta army would also be exciting. There are several different options when it comes to picking an ancient Chinese setting and lots of influential historical figures to pick from. Just as the potential emperors and dynasties to feature could be a list of its own, but some notable examples include Qin Shi Huang and the one female ruler Wu Zetian. Depending on when the game is set, it could also take a page from Odyssey and include some influential Chinese philosophers like Confucius or the legendary Sun Tzu. Number 3. Ancient Nubia, the Kush Empire. Nubia was home to many kingdoms, but what really established it as a civilization was the rise of Kush, a powerful empire whose history would become intertwined with that of their neighbours in Egypt. Relations between the two civilizations fluctuated between lucrative trading and bloody conquest. Kush was briefly conquered by Thutmose III, but it later went on to conquer Egypt and install its own dynasty of pharaohs. Kush actually proved strong enough to resist invasions by the Assyrian, Persian and Roman empires and outlasted Egypt significantly. This makes it unfortunate that its legacy has been largely overshadowed by Egypt, but that might be to the advantage of an Assassin's Creed game. Naturally, there's lots of history to choose from. 
Cush was ruled by several kings and queens and had its share of enemies. An Assassin's Creed game here could look into any of the invasions experienced by Nubia or its efforts at external conquest. Depending on exactly what time period was chosen, its connection to Egypt could also offer room to tie into the events of Origins while still offering a new and distinct setting. Number 2. Persia and the Persian Empire Long before Rome, it was the Persians who built an empire across the known world. Today, the Persian Empire is probably best known for its frequent clashing with Greece and its infamous battle against Leonidas and his 300 Spartans at Thermopylae. This event was depicted in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but most fans were only used to the Greek perspective. The Persian Empire had a long history spanning over 200 years, not all of which were as brutal and violent as they are often made out to be. Odyssey may have provided a possible opening for such a game, with the reveal that the cult of Cosmos intended for Persia to win at Thermopylae, only to be defied by Leonidas. This suggests a possible connection to Xerxes I, who might be either backed by the cult or a member himself. The other big one would be Cyrus the Great, the founder of the Persian Empire and a man that might give the assassins some mixed feelings. Either way, there is a whole piece of history here of which the surface has barely been scratched. And at number one is Sumeria. Located in what is now southern Iraq, Sumeria marks the earliest known human civilization and it made a huge splash on the ancient world. Some notable inventions of theirs include the wheel, the plough and beer, but their most widely recognised accomplishment was the first known written language. This is literally the furthest back in time an Assassin's Creed game could go without entering the Stone Age or the Isu civilization. A game set in Sumeria would practically be going back to the beginning of everything. Additionally, it would allow the player to climb ziggurats, early pyramid shaped structures commonly found in Sumerian cities. The game could also work with multiple formats. While a vast open world set across Sumeria would be great, even just one of its many cities could make for an engaging map. There are a number of historical Sumerian kings who could be brought to life. The most iconic is perhaps Gilgamesh, who was later mythologised in the famous epic poem. Another figure of note is the first recorded female poet, Enheduanna. But a great point for a story might be the conquests of Sargon the Great, a good antagonist for the proto-order of the ancient stroke cult of cosmos-esque faction. The player could be part of a resistance movement seeking to liberate Sumeria from his grip. Alright, there you go. We've counted down the top five locations for Assassin's Creed, either DLC or standalone main games, open world, according to Game Rant. So that will conclude the video for today. So just to recap, if you have enjoyed what you've heard, don't forget to do what it says at the bottom of the page, and that's leave a like, comment, let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, help support the channel. You can follow me on the social media websites listed on the page here also. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one. Take care of yourself out there in the world and bye bye for now.